this, community members, villagers, the media, and invited guests who have joined us today to stand in solidarity with our struggle. Your presence here demonstrates an important level of commitment to our people, to our future, and to our continued struggle as a young nation. But what exactly is the struggle that we speak of? What is the Maya struggle? I would like to explain a little bit further. Typically, our struggle is described as a struggle for indigenous rights. And it is true that we are struggling to have our rights as indigenous people recognized, including, importantly, our right to land. But this is not the only way to understand our struggle. All over the world, all throughout history, people have engaged in countless struggles. Struggle for their dignity, for equality, for respectful and just societies, for democratic power relations, for a livable planet. Many are struggling around this world. We can draw lines between these different struggles as if these struggles were separate and belonged to distinct social groups. But the distinctions would be false, and we would only lose sight of something important, that our struggle is for a better world. One that is more just, where there exists the possibility of many worlds. One that is a struggle, in that sense, for all of us one struggle. Let me put it even more bluntly. The whole movement is fundamentally about changing our society, making a better Belize, and in that way, making a better world. So let us speak more concretely about what we have been doing as a Maya people our vision, and its real meaning for Belizeans. We begin with land, and as you know, our struggle has long centered on land, on securing land that we have customarily and historically used to produce our livelihoods. To Belizeans who are not Maya, it may appear that we are trying to get something for ourselves, but consider it from another perspective. We are only insisting on what we already have and what we already use. If you boil the entire legal case down to one basic principle, it is, thou shall not steal. Thou shall not steal land from the poor farmer. This is what the Supreme Court said in the simplest of languages. We are powerful people. Why are powerful people in Belize so threatened by our claim to secure the land that we have always used? The simple answer is this. They do not want to see people who have long been marginalized, be it Maya or non-Maya. They do not want to see us stand for ourselves and refuse to allow the continued theft or plunder of our land and resources by the powerful. Not only this, they are trying to set us against each other by suggesting that respecting the dignity of one group is a violation of another group, that recognizing the rights of one group violates the rights of another that recognizing the rights of land to one means that the rest of us cannot get land. That struggling for a secure land tenure is threatening the sovereignty of this nation Belize, rather than seeing it for what it really is, a fight for self-determination, a fight for autonomy. We reject this. We reject the position of the state. And we would like to thank those, all those, who have reached out to us and sent us messages of solidarity. Such as the following, sent to us from some Garifuna leaders this week. 
and I will read what they said. We face an attack on the right to communal land, to practicing autonomy within our communities. These are the rights we have as indigenous people that scare the powerful. Only when it suits them politically do we ever have the government or the support of the educated and powerful. And so we must unite and we must seek good allies and support. We agree completely and we embrace and appreciate this crucial message from our Garifuna brothers in La Yawada, Cerro. Thank you, brothers of St. Vincent Block, Cerro Garifuna communal lands. This struggle is for you too. And as you know, the Maya communities persist in using the lands in ways that are simply not driven by the market. I say this not to romanticize the Maya communities where poverty does exist or to suggest that we do not live in a capitalistic society. Clearly we do. But the fact is that in most of our Maya communities, the land is still managed in common by the community. In other words, land for us is not just a commodity, a product for sale. The very idea that we could continue to live with the land, to live with each other in a dignified way that is not defined by the market, that respects our ties to our earth in a dignified way, that is not defined by the market, that is not just a way to make a dollar, or as mere real estate. This idea threatens the elites and the powerful of this society, of this country we call the least, who have always enriched themselves by controlling and selling our lands. The dynamic, this dynamic was powerfully expressed in an editorial by Evan X. Hyde, and I will quote, it is not politically sensible for us at this newspaper to support the Maya against the majority oligarchical position, but Amandala does support the Maya. We have always fought against the European-inspired idea that our African and Mayan ancestors were savages and barbarians and cannibals. On Patrick Street, we are allies of the Maya. We have the same enemies that the Maya do that is modern, rapacious, murderous capitalism introduced by Europeans and sustained now by neo-Europeans. This brings us then to a critical question of democracy. Belize is formally democratic, as you all know. Our political system does not work democratically, though. Ordinary Belizeans like you and I do not have power. Our votes are bought and sold. Real power lies in the ministers. Divide and conquer controls the constituencies. This is a system that is left over from the colonial days. Let us call it out for what it is. We reject this. We offer to Belizeans an entirely different conception of politics direct democracy, working through community meetings where everyone has a voice. Our village leaders, the alcaldes, are elected without political parties, rotating through office at the biggest of our villagers. According to our customs, decision-making authority does not rest unilaterally in the alcalde, but rather vests in the village collectively. The village meeting is the fundamental authority and primary decision-making body. The alcalde only represents the will of his people. Let me also cite a wonderful essay by my brother and comrade, Garifuna thinker Jerry Enriquez. His article entitled, Why the Maya Won, published this past April in the Amandala. And Jerry says, the success of the Mayas from their decades of struggle provides valuable lessons for all the nations. For one, the strength of their indigenous communal leadership and governing institutions 
like their Alcalde system and the Maya Leaders Alliance, were very important to maintaining support for one another and to sustain the pursuit of their vision. Through their established leadership system, they were able to access international resource, resources and support for the protection of their rights. Through successive PUP and UDP administrations, the Maya leadership was also able to keep politics in its place in order to avoid the compromising attachment to one political party or the other. As has been the weakness of very few councils, such detachment and their internal cohesion were important for leadership to keep focused and ensure that their investments of time, energies, and other resources are held to divisive party are held hostage to divisive party politics. The collective ownership of the struggle by the Maya leadership united them to common cause as well as to their community, traditions, and culture, because they live their customary land rights as a part of their culture. The idea they brought forward was not an external imposition. They owned their vision and acted to achieve it. Given their rights were not respected by the government, they knew that it was they themselves who have to assert the protection of their rights. The Maya's belief that they can change their situation was also critical. When people believe that nothing can be changed, or that someone else out there, up there somewhere, should do the work to change their situation, they will never organize or act to make things happen. However, when people believe that it is upon them to change their situation, they will act accordingly. As Belizeans savor the victory of the Maya as a victory for all, especially marginalized Belizeans, we must all strive to continue to understand the forces that direct people from supporting one another to fulfill their rights and their dignity. Belizeans cannot allow these forces to destroy the right of all to a better life. The road ahead will be one of reconciliation among all parties and for emerging leadership to be nurtured. Again, those are the words of my brother, my friend, Jerry Enriquez. I hope that even those Belizeans who are a bit skeptical about our movement recognize that basically we are mobilizing, we are educating, we are organizing our people without making any apologies for who we are or what we are. If Belize is to become a better place, we all recognize that it will require activating and mobilizing Belizeans all across this country so ordinary people have the ability and the confidence to actively participate in governing every aspect of their lives. Frankly speaking, we Belizeans have not yet built the social movements that we need to transform our society. We offer ourselves now in all our limitations as one element of a broader movement. We offer ourselves in solidarity with all others to come. In this sense, we are a struggle of women. We are a struggle of poor people, of those who have lost their children because they cannot afford medicine or because of the negligence of our health officials. A struggle of those who cannot access land even under the current order of things of the workers, of the caneros, of the unions, and all those who seek a dignified livelihood, of the dispossessed and downtrodden, to whom we say here and now, we are in solidarity with you. We do not come to lead you, but to offer you our vision of a world of many worlds, where no one is excluded where dignity and justice are guaranteed to all. Sometimes people may wonder, wouldn't it be easier for the Maya people, the indigenous people, to get on with the play, to get on board with everybody else, to check in our identities, to become ordinary citizens, learn English so you avoid being called Guatemalan, forget your native Kekchi or Mopan, 
Forget about communal 